Have you ever felt like your body's stuck in high alert mode, like if a saber-toothed tiger is always around the corner? Stick around to discover how I turn off that ancient alarm system, and so you can do it too. Welcome back everyone, I'm Lucy, here to keep Leo's research and memory alive, and more importantly, to guide you on a journey towards better health and well-being. Before we dive into today's life's changing topic, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe and ring that bell because you're not going to want to miss a single health secret we unravel. Today's video is based on a mix of a lot of things, Leo's previous research and my own research as well as my own experience on how I am overcoming my highly dysregulated nervous system. We're going to be diving into the mysteries of our nervous system, especially the fight or flight response. So this isn't just a reaction, it's a complex ballet of biology and chemistry designed to protect us. But what happens when these protective mechanisms start to working over time? Let's explore. First, imagine facing the saber-toothed tiger. Your body instantly gears up for a life or death decision. This is the fight or flight. Adrenaline and cortisol flood into your system, increasing your heart rate, sharpening your senses and preparing your muscles for action. <laughs> So in the modern one, though, our tigers are often deadline, social pressure, or sometimes even overflowing inbox. Acute fight or flight response are just vital for survival. They're your body rapid response to immediate threats and a temporary states, enabling us for quick action. But the problem arises when these states become chronic. Chronic activation, being in perpetually fight or flight mode, is like having an alarm that never turns off. It's exhausted. It can lead to a myriad of health issues, anxiety, and also heart disease. Now let's consider the impact of childhood trauma. Early life stress, can it be emotional, physical, or otherwise, can rewire the brain, setting a higher baseline for this fight, for this fight or flight response. It's like calibrating your system to perceive threats more readily, keeping you in a constant state of high alert. What does being in this overdriven state looks like in everyday life? It's more than just feeling stress. It's over planning, having backup plans for your backup plans. It's reacting intensely to very minor stressors, feeling overwhelmed by regular activities. The mmm of the refrigerator feels like torture or when eating quickly isn't just a habit, but a necessity because your body is ready to move on the next threat. All the signs of fight or flight response include rapid speech, uh, a tendency to overthink during your downtime, a loss of perspective, or even like entering free states when you have so much to do, but it feels like impossible to even start. So all of these are just basic classic indicators that your nervous system is stuck on overdrive. Breaking free from this cycle, especially when rooted in childhood trauma, isn't just about your symptoms management, it's about rewiring and retraining your entire nervous system. But so what happens when someone is constantly in this survival mode? Well, their body is always on high alert, which can be mentally and physically draining. And they also might experience chronic anxiety, have difficulty sleeping, or constantly feel on edge. It's a very tough cycle to break, especially when it's rooted in childhood experiences. In my opinion, recognizing the sign of being in survival mode is absolutely crucial. This includes like heightened vigilance, a tendency to overreact, difficulty relaxing, difficulty of feeling safe, or even having like some physical symptoms like chronic fatigue or digestive issues. Like I said, breaking free from those with trauma, it really requires a multifaceted approach. It's not just about managing the symptoms, but here we're going to address the underlying triggers. Today, I want to open up about my own journey to calm my dysregulated nervous system. First, let's start with understanding how I recognize my nervous system was out of balance. In my childhood, beginning at the age of seven, I was involved with maltreatment, which profoundly impacted me. And I understand now, backed by science, the critical role of a child's environment in shaping their future, especially before the age of five. And I'm somewhat grateful that I didn't experience any trauma before five. Leo did, and I know that was one of the main reasons of all his struggles. By the time I was 10, I had to become the responsible adult in my household. My mother, confined in a wheelchair after being in the hospital for a little bit, and as well as my younger sister, they all depended on me. So I had to juggle the household responsibility, my mother was scarce, and more importantly, or the more impactful thing, was the constant effort to try to anticipate her needs to avoid being mistreated. But this experience programmed my brain to always plan for every eventuality, prioritizing others' needs and be perpetually on alert. For years, I assumed that this was normal and I was never fully realizing how my childhood trauma was influencing me in my life. It was only after becoming a mother and facing significant challenges in my marriage, like you all know, 
followed by a burned out that I was compelled to confront my past. And I know children mimic everything and having had a challenging mother, I was strongly determined to be the opposite of what she was. So I thought like talk therapy, hypnotherapy and other holistic therapy to work through my traumas. And this process was truly eye opening. I really saw how my adult behavior were mostly dictated by my past, living in constant fear and in fight or flight mode. My actions were often about alleviating fear even when they weren't beneficial for me. So our brain gravitates towards what's familiar, seeking safety even when it's unhealthy. Another very interesting sign that I was in high fight or flight was my inability to lose weight. Despite eating healthy and working out, I always struggled to lose weight. Even Leo was like baffled by what I was eating daily and not understanding why I shouldn't shed my unwanted pounds despite my effort. He didn't care about them, it was just me and my self-conscious. But luckily, over the last two years, I've made tremendous progress in rewiring my brain response pattern. I've experimented with various protocol and method, constantly learning and adapting. So this journey hasn't been easy and there have been a lot of setbacks, but it's been very transformative. Right now, I've lost 20 pounds in the last five months, yoo-hoo! And I'm now focusing really on my stress response and con continuing to work on managing my fight or flight reactions. So as we discuss the fight or flight response and delve into my story, I'm going to share with you some tools and techniques that have helped me find balance. And at the end of the video, I will provide a detailed practical protocol that you can implement in your life. If I can make this changing as a working soccer mom, I believe anyone can. And it's about taking the first steps towards a healthier, calmer you. The first pivotal changes in my journey was transforming my diet. The food we consume play an instrumental role in how body responds to stress. I transitioned to a low inflammatory diet, which is really effective in reducing the production of stress hormones and calming the nervous system. No for their calming properties. So for instance, magnesium, which found in leafy greens, nuts and seeds play a role in regulating our nervous system. And it helps reduce the stress response by acting on the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the central stress response system. Then we also have the omega-3 fatty acids, which is another cornerstone of my diet. It's essential for brain health and managing inflammation. You can find it in uh, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel and sardine, but it's not just about what you add, it's also about what you need to avoid. So avoiding processed food, high sugar, unhealthy fats can exacerbate inflammation and disrupt the balance of your nervous system. Incorporating anti-inflammatory food like turmeric, ginger and berries alongside magnesium and omega-3 rich food can create a very powerful synergy. And this dietary approach not only aid in redu reducing inflammation, but also support overall mental health and resilience against stress. In managing dysregulated nervous system, Supplements can play a vital role, but it's also crucial to approach them with awareness and balance. So let's talk about what works and what to be cautious about. First, we have the famous ashwagandha. It's a very popular herb in Ayurvedic medicines. It became very popular in our modern world, and it's because it's known for its stress relieving property. However, I've chosen to avoid it due to potential concerns regarding liver toxicity. Instead, I've turned to supplements that have a more established safety profile and are known to support the nervous system health. Magnesium, like I talked before, I supplement with regularly, that helps with the nerve functions, it also acts as a natural calcium blocker, which is helping muscle relax and reducing the fight or flight response. Another group of supplements I rely on are the B vitamins, and they're crucial for maintaining optimal neurological and psychological health. So for example, vitamin B6 helps with the production of neurotransmitter like serotonin and dopamine, which are vital for mood regulation and stress management. And I want to remind everybody that supplements should be a complement and not replace a balanced diet. It's part of the broader strategy of managing stress and support nervous health system. For everyone considering supplements, please consult with a healthcare professional because I'm not a medical doctor and they can help find a regimen that suited for you. As part of my journey to regulate my nervous system, I made a significant lifestyle change that's going to be controversial. I quit caffeine. Now, it was not a small part. I drank two coffee a day and it was really part of my daily routine. I love the taste, but I think it was a necessary step for me. While caffeine has a lot of benefits, it can also exacerbate stress response. And this effect is not just about feeling jittery after a cup of coffee, it's about how coffee interacts with our body on a deeper physiological level. Research suggests that caffeine can reinforce the vascular inflammatory response during mental stress. And this is crucial because this inflammatory response are just part of our fight or flight mechanism, 
Let's look into the mechanism. So coffee consumption, especially over the long term, have been associated with increased level of inflammatory marker like interleukin-6 and C-reactive protein. This is important because those markers play a role in our body's stress response system. By cutting out caffeine, I was aiming to reduce this inflammatory response, thereby helping to manage my anxiety level and calm my fight or flight response. For those of us with a history of childhood trauma, and I include myself in this group, our baseline for fight or flight is often skewed higher. This means we're more likely to experience chronic activation of our fight or flight response. So reducing any potential trigger like caffeine become even more critical. Now, another aspect of my journey to rebalance my nervous system has been regular exercise. But let's fear a misconception first. When I say exercise, I'm not just talking about high intensity workout that leaves you completely breathless. The truth is even moderation activity like brisk walk, cycling or yoga can have profound effects on your mental well-being and stress levels. Why is exercise so beneficial for stress management? So when we engage in physical activities, our body releases endorphin. Those are the natural mood lifter. They act as analgesic, which means they diminish the perception of pain and they also serve as sedatives. It's not just about the endorphin. Exercise also helps regulate the production of stress hormone like cortisol and adrenaline. Regular physical exercise improves your body's ability to respond to stress. It's like tuning a fine instrument. Exercise helps you handle stress more efficiently. By maintaining constant exercise routine, you can enhance your resilience to stressors, reduce your symptoms of anxiety and depression, and improve your overall mood. This is not new, everybody kind of know that, but sometimes we don't do it. But research shows that even 30 minutes of moderate exercise a few times a week can just impact this tremendously. For me, I do walking, some yoga, and occasional boxing because I just love boxing. And it's been highly effective to help me manage stress, also improve my sleep quality, my focus, and it just boosts my overall energy levels. Another step in my quest to recalibrate my nervous system, I also discover the power of mindfulness practices. Mindfulness and meditation are just not just buzzword, they're just essential tools that have brought a lot of changes in my life. Meditation in particular has been a game changer. I had a very hard time to get into meditation until I discovered the Muse headband to guide my sessions and providing me real-time feedback on my brain activity to help me achieve deeper level of focus and relaxation. I don't know if you've used Muse or if you've heard of it, I highly recommend you to check it out. It gives you biofeedback on your meditation level. I started out about uh, on the 15 minute sessions to be like 30 to 40% 30, 30 40 calm and now I'm achieving 90 plus percent. And research underscore the benefits of regular meditation showing that it can reduce symptoms of stress and anxiety by altering the brain response to stressors. But my mindfulness journey didn't stop at just meditation. I recently started integrating the shadow board, also known as the nail board, into my routine. This practice, which involves standing on a board with a lot of nails and acupressure points, it stimulates the body meridian lines and it promotes relaxation and pain relief. The sensation might seem very intense at first, but it also quickly evolves into a deeply soothing experience and it really enhances mental clarity and physical well-being. I have also explored like sound bath sessions. It's like where resonant sounds from instruments like singing bowls and gongs create like an immersive auditory experience. So incorporating these mindfulness practices into my daily life, I brought profound changes. A few minutes a day can significantly reduce stress and anxiety, improve sleep quality, and enhance overall mood. It's also about creating a space where the mind can pause away from constant chatters and demons, social media, and everyday life. Again, mindfulness is not just one-size-fits-all solution. It's really about you finding the practice that resonates with you the most and trying to integrate them into your daily life to cultivate a more balanced and calm nervous system. One aspect of calming the nervous system, as always, it's often overlooked is sleep. The quality of sleep is not just a luxury, it's like a non-negotiable pillar of health. Through my amazing best friend and tracking Ura Ring, I gained some invaluable insights into my sleep quality, which has been a game changer in managing my stress level and also my well-being. The science behind the importance of sleep in stress management is compelling. There are many studies that have shown and reviewed that extensively. And we know that poor sleep can exacerbate stress response, while stress can, in turn, lead to sleep disturbance. So this cycle can have significant impact on physical and mental health. But what does quality sleep really mean? It's about achieving deep, restorative sleep stage, maintaining a constant sleep schedule, and ensuring the sleeping environment supports restfulness. This includes like having a dark room, quiet room, a comfortable mattress, maintaining a cool temperature to sleep. I personally be able to track various sleep metrics such as sleep stages, heart rate variability, and overall sleep duration. And this data has allowed me to make targeted changes to improve my sleep quality. 
For instance, I've adjusted my evening routine to include like a winding down activity and also limit my exposure to blue lights before bedtime. And also turn all my lights in red before going to bed, at least one hour. This really helped my mood and stress level. And I saw the improvement in my ability to handle day-to-day -day stressors. And as a side note, when I experience very acute stress, I rely on a specific breathing technique. For women, I've spoken about it extensively. One, the effective method is to inhale for no by a second inhale before exhaling for about a minute. And it really immediately calms the nervous system. I do that every time I'm on a high stress level and it works every single time. Lastly, do not underestimate the power of social support and hobbies that brings joy. So connecting with loved ones and engaging in activities that you love can be crucial in managing stress level and your nervous system. But now I want to talk to you about a key player in my wellness journey is the Neurosim. So it's not just any device, it's a wearable neuromodulation tool that's redefining health and wellness. As a certified medical tool, it's making significant stride in improving life, my life. <laughs> Neurosim distinguishes itself through a scientific approach, especially in how it targets the nervous system. Neurosim focuses on the afferent nerves of the vagus nerve located in the tragus. So the mechanism of Neurosim involves sending signal through these afferent nerves to the brain stems. This activation is pivotal as it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. For those with a chronically unbalanced autonomous nervous system, this is where Neurosim works its magic. It helps bring the autonomous nervous system back into equilibrium. This balance is essential for our well-being as the autonomous nervous system is responsible for regulating many of our body automatic functions, such as heart rate and digestion. So what's the significance of this? Well, when the autonomic nervous system is in balance, it can lead to issues such as stress, anxiety, and physical alignment. Neurosim addresses this by sending targeted electrical impulses to the brain stems, promoting balance and well-being. What drew me to Neurosim was its potential to enhance the lifestyle changes I'd already implemented. Its direct interaction with the brain stem seems like the ideal addition to my holistic health strategy. Its range of potential health benefits is extensive. It's been linked to improved memory and cognition, reduced brain fog, decreased fight or flight response, alleviate symptoms of depression and anxiety, mood enhancement, and improving in uh, heart rate variability. It's even shown promises in reducing post viral symptoms, improving sleep, reducing inflammation, and oxidative stress. And some users also reported improved gut issues. Neurosim serves as a powerful biohacking tool. Ongoing research suggests that it could positively impact athletic performance and muscle recovery. So it works through various mechanisms, promoting the rest and digest response, inhibiting pro-inflammatory cytokines, decreasing oxidative stress, and fostering neuroplasticity. I've been integrating Neurosim into my daily routine and it has been transformative. It improved my energy levels, my mood, in my overall health, and it's very easy to fit into my lifestyle changes. Well, like chemical interventions might offer similar benefits, it's not without side effects, so I've choosing a path that avoided altering my brain chemistry excessively. This decision is particularly relevant for me because I am sensitive to hormonal and chemical changes, and I think it's a trait that many women can relate. Therefore, a wearable neuromodulator like Neurosim is an optional choice for me. Remember, biohacking is a personal journey, it's not one size fit all. Always consult with medical professional if you're considering a similar path. I have made all the lifestyle changes I mentioned before about a month and a half before starting using Neurosim. Then I saw the actual difference of the lifestyle changes and I saw how Neurosim helped me get to the level where I wanted to get in terms of calming my stress response. I've been using Neurosim twice daily for 30 minutes each session. And within a week, I started noticing significantly changes how I respond to stress. And let me give you a real example. I, I remember one day I was actually exhausted because my, my daughter woke up in the middle of the night and so my sleep was disturbed. That day she decided to throw an intense tantrum. That's what a two-year-old does apparently. I guess parents can relate. When I'm usually in overstimulated situation, I would snap and have a tendency to yell. But at this time something was different. I was able to remain calm and composed and I was able to resolve the situation quickly and gently. And that moment was a revelation. I realized that the only significant change in my routine was using the Neurosim. And after just seven days of using it, I saw a difference. For me, it's clear that it does more than just balancing my nervous system. It also enhanced my ability to handle like the stressors and unpredictable life moments. And you might think it's just coincidence that you were able to get calm in that way. This is just one example. I have other examples where I know I would get 
snappy or at least angry from the inside because I try to shield my anger to not show it to my daughter but it's still there on the inside and my thoughts and the way my body is and I'm able to regulate myself and handle any stressors a lot quicker and in a much healthier way than I used to before. This is the first time that I'm able to do that and it's truly life-changing for me. I can't even express how amazing this journey has been. Let me share some practical tips on using Neurosim. First, it's about consistency. I use it twice a day, morning and evening for 30 minutes. The application is straightforward. You just attach it here as instructed. And then you start with a lower setting and then you increase it as recommended. Incorporating Neurosim into my daily routine was really seamless. I do my morning meditation with it. And then again, at night when I'm winning down, I put it now because when I'm filming, I get usually stressed and I'm like, why not try it at the same time? And I feel like it's really helping. I'm feeling more comfortable talking in front of a camera where before I would get a lot more stress. In my journey with Neurosim, I've also been using the Oprah ring to track and quantify its effects. So here's some data I want to give it to you. So before using Neurosim, my sleep score was on average on 85 and my HRV balance was on average of 42. After seven days of using Neurosim, I saw a difference. Again, it's just seven days, so I'm gonna keep updating it, but my sleep score went into an average of 92, my HRV rise to 58. And I'm aware there's different factors. I'm also a mom, so my daughter disturbs some of my sleep. I have different life stressors that come in, but I will keep track of this and report to see if it improved long-term. Interestingly, Brian Johnson, known for his biohacking endeavor, also been using the Neurosim for similar reason, especially for HRV training. In this video, he explains that HRV is a representation of our nervous system balance and it fluctuates between states of stress and relaxation. Brian have been using Neurosim for 30 minutes twice a day also, and he almost managed to double his HRV, moving from the low 30s to the low 60s. It's funny because Brian has experienced minor my own in many ways, so it highlights the importance of being aware of our own internal states and using tools like Neurosim to positively impact our overall health and well-being. Now I'm gonna talk about the weekly protocol I use with Neurosim. So the overall guideline eliminate caffeine to reduce stress on the nervous system, embrace a new diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids and magnesium, avoid processed food for optimal mental health, take any supplements that will support your nervous system's health, optimize your sleep condition, really make sure you have a sleep conductive environment, huge pitch black curtain, eye mask, noise reduction technique, whatever, mouth taping if you want to try this, try sleep accordingly to your chronotype. Women typically need like seven to nine hours while men more six to eight hours a night. And here's my morning routine. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes. So I start putting the Neurosim for 30 minute sessions and I put it and I go directly into the sunlight to boost my circuit and rhythm regulation. Then I step on my shadow board three times a week during 15 minutes of that session. So I'm outside in my balcony I put the Neurosim, I step on my shadow board doing breathing because you need to do a lot of breathing while being on the shadow board. I stay on the shadow board for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the day. Then I step back and I finish my 10, 15 minutes of Neurosim while doing other thing at home. Next, four times a week after my Neurosim sessions, I do a three minutes ice bath. If I don't have time to make an ice bath, I just put my face into a bowl of ice water for the same duration. Talk about the benefits of cold exposure and ice bath, but it will be probably another video that will give you more details on it. But this is the protocol I'm using right now. Then I do 30 minutes of physical exercise, like walking three to four times a week to boost circulation and mood. My night routine takes about 6, 30 to 60 minutes. So I put back the Neurosim for 30 minute sessions. I do my meditation and journaling. So I usually do 15 minutes of meditation followed by 15 minutes of journaling to track my feeling emotions. And then I try to have at least two social or hobby based activity per week to support my emotional well being. And also twice a week, I incorporate a 30 minute sauna session. So for men, Consider using an ice pack on your genital area, drink the sauna for added benefits and not lowering your testosterone. Another thing that I started doing is emotional identification. So during moments of stress, I pause and try to identify and describe my emotion to try to process them faster. And I use the breathing technique, a double inhale followed by a single exhale method to calm my nervous system. So if you found this dive into a fight or flight response and nervous system and lightning, hit that follow button and share with someone that you think might benefit from it. Please let me know below if you have tried this, if you are looking to try this or with any question you might have. The Neurosim, they actually offer a 30-day risk-free trial, so I recommended you try it. They also gave me a promo code to give you a discount, so if you're interested, it will be done below. Like I said, you have the choice of regulating your own nervous system 
and stop being in the constant fight or flight response. And it all starts with changes that you can make in your daily life. This is just an added tool that helped boost it and I think made the result come quicker. Thank you for sticking with me until the end. Until next time, stay curious and stay well.